Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Welcome to Plank of the Week. It's Friday night on Talk TV and there's only one place to be and that is right here, of course, as we look over some of the behaviour of some of the people in this country who lead it and some of it who follow it as well. Uh, we've got a great panel tonight as well to find out who is going to win Plank of the Week. Uh, we've got Esther Kraku, we've got Leon Amirali, uh, we've got Amanda Devlin and we have the former First Minister of Scotland, uh, Mr Alex Salmon. Welcome to all of you. Here is the plank that we're all going to be fighting for. And that's the noise that everybody loves to hear. I'll just Ooh. do it one more time, shall we? One more time. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a fantastic piece of equipment, that. And it's the most expensive thing in this yeah. entire building. This costs an absolute fortune. I didn't move it that time. Anyway, uh, here we go. We've had Tory party conference. Yes. We've had HS2. There's going to be a lot of um, fighting over this, I think. Um, Esther, why don't you kick us off? A favourite, the NHS. The NHS. Wow. The NHS yeah. because of male menopause, apparently. Yes. What is you, that? What is male menopause, you ask? I will get yeah. to that. Okay. But the reason why people are incensed with the NHS is because they've released guidelines for uh, NHS uh, medics to to have their male menopause treated in the same way as female menopause. Yes. Which means they can take up to a year off work. So what is male menopause? Some men develop depression, loss of sex drive, erectile dysfunction, and other physical and emotional symptoms when they reach their late 40s to early 50s. Now, I was under the impression that that was a midlife crisis. Yes. And the way to solve that would be to <laughs> sleep a with a 27-year-old yeah, and, and, a and buy a Lamborghini. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But apparently, the NHS would pay for you to take a year off work. Now, yeah. listen, I think a trip to Mallorca with a bunch of 20-something <laughs> Swedish bunnies yeah. and a very <laughs> sleek car would be cheaper for I'm the NHS. I'm surprised you don't get that on a prescription from the NHS. Listen, I, I'm, got, I'm working is on that, is it. I happen to be one of the candidates. To choose the Lamborghini <laughs> or the 20 I don't think you do. <laughs> what, I mean, what would you choose? Oh, a Lamborghini, absolutely. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Not the Swedish definitely. monies? Uh, on television, it's a Lamborghini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the problem is, of course, that does this mean then that women can get a year off as well for the Well, menopause? apparently, so th that's the guy. So the way female menopause is treated is they're supposed to have... Uh, well, you have you know, hormone take, replacement. Uh, exactly, and take months off. HRT. But this, is, this is applies to NHS medics, so how it's... Because, obviously, the right. NHS, as the employer, has to take certain... Right. Um, positions and, and follow certain well, you guidelines. get a year off for anything. But, but now men can do it as well. So right. men basically experiencing what we would call a midlife crisis yeah. can now get a year off work on, mm. on the NHS's dime. I mean, this would be incredible. why there are so few people actually at work in the NHS, won't well. it? Because they're all not just taking time off for this, but they get so much time off for all sorts of things and they yeah. can just walk off the job and go... Oh, I'm not feeling very well today. I think yeah. I'll come back, about, come back in about six months. How do they actually prove that they've got that? Because surely they can... Some might not have symptoms. Well, erectile dysfunction. You, can, other people. you can just say I, it. I, I imagine the erectile dysfunction would be easier yeah, to yeah. bear. Yeah. But the other side of symptoms... Bit, <laughs> feeling a bit down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... There's any number of reasons why that could be happening, right? Um, and there's any number of, of cures for Listen, that. Listen, well, they're, they're, maybe it's not his fault. I've heard of a little blue pill, yeah. but I'm not a doctor, so don't quote me on that. Are they prescribing the Porsches and the Lamborghinis on the NHS to, to cure this? Or? Well, you have to no, start that was with the just blue pill first. Don't no, that was just our little joke. Listen, but the point is that, in the end, um, there is no such thing as the male menopause, is there? Uh, I mean, it's not a well, medically recognised condition. Well, the NHS website says it's misleading and they find the, the term male menopause not useful. But for really? some reason, there, there's, there's NHS guidelines for NHS trust with but regard can, to male yeah. menopause and how they can take time off work. But so what what I mean is you can actually just say, oh, say yeah, it. I feel depressed. I, you know, I'm having trouble in the bedroom with my wife. Shouldn't they be I calling fancy it having the a menopause. year off and be paid for it. I Shouldn't mean, they imagine they call it your wife. Should they call yeah. it the menopause? <laughs> it's got alliteration. <laughs> Male menopause has got alliteration. I mean, when I get there, I'll let you know but, yeah. uh, <laughs> if it's real or not. Well, I've, I think I've gone through it already. I must have had it ages ago. Yeah, but why You definitely haven't had it. Why can't people just go on strike like responsible people? Why do they have to get out of the Just go on strike. Yeah. Doctors don't have to worry about the male menopause. So yeah, as you say, just on the picket line. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there should be like gradations to curing this. Like, first you take the blue pill, then you get right. a weekend in Mallorca, and then you get two weekends. But in it might be that I mean, there are people who <laughs> will genuinely say that they're suffering from some kind of depression, and that can be that can be a reason to take yeah. time off. But a year off to give anyone who's got a proper job just seems bonkers to me. Well, yes, and the fact that we're paying you for can't it, take a year offensive. off work. That's more, it's mad. I think giving the Prime Minister a year off would be a great idea. Well, that's different. There'll be an election soon. You know about all those. Um, now, here's an old video we found. Uh, of an, an, it's an NHS instructional video. It's not about the male menopause, but have a look at this. I thought that was a waste of money. Wait till you hear what Leon's got for you, because you've got HS2. <laughs> yeah, so my plank of the week is, is HS2, yeah. right? So we spent, Jeez. what, nearly 100 billion taxpayers' yeah. pounds on HS2, and yeah. now Rishi's just turned around and said, 
you know what, forget about it. Yeah, yeah. And I don't understand the business logic of that because either you go ahead with this thing or you just don't, you, you realize early on that it's not going to work. And I've just seen that Japan are launching you know, this high tech train yeah. for half the cost of HS2, which is already old technology. Well, I think that's, yeah. a bit, that's the bigger issue. We should be asking questions about why it costs, so, why we never get anything done and why it costs so much to get something done. We, Spain spends about a tenth of what we spend I'll on tell high, you why, spe I, high speed rail. I'll tell you why I said because all of these contractors are pocketing the cash, massive dividends. Mm. They're all spending it on, you know, things that aren't critical to building this route. Yeah. Well, and it was yeah. all yeah. wasted yeah. money. Restrictions as well. I mean, half conference. of it was supposed That's to be in stuff. a tunnel, which cost a lot more money. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, meandering through the... I mean, the most expensive part of HS2 was between London and Birmingham. So mm. actually, it probably would have cost them less to just carry on to, to Manchester. Why did it take so long? They should so never long. have started it in the first place. Oh, yeah, of course. Place, they should never because started. we didn't need a faster well, train. Well, it's, it's easy um, to say that now, but I mean, look, it's just a mistake. They made a small mistake. <laughs> 100, 100 billion. billion. <laughs> look on the bright side. We think of them. What was the alternative? We could have invaded Iraq again. That cost about 100 billion. So you look upon HS2 as an alternative to a world invasion. <laughs> uh -huh. When you put it like that, Alex, yeah, but, it's uh, yeah. good yeah. See, This is how you know he's the politician, right? Because yeah. he's trying to find ways of spending 100 billion. This is how about you don't awesome. spend it? <laughs> don't invade Iraq, oh, okay. don't build HS2, don't give it away to a lot of migrants, just keep Be it, sensible. and then that way you can give it away. You know, the only question I asked David Cameron about HS2, I said, are there consequentials for Scotland? Yes. <laughs> That's right. all, and the answer was no. Well, well, the thing is, now nobody knows mm. where HS2 is going. Mm. Uh, if it has, you know, the London to Birmingham bit, actually is going to be fast or slow. Nobody knows whether it's, it's a high-speed train. It's going to be 12 train. minutes faster, apparently, than the normal yeah. trains from London to Birmingham. But it'll it's still not be, valuable. It'll but be it delayed won't. anyway. But yeah. you know what happens. <laughs> I mean, when, when we built the trains, um, the, 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 the fast train to, to uh, you know, Eurostar, to France, it goes faster in France than it does here. Yeah. Because in Kent, apparently, the railway line isn't very good, so yeah. they can't actually go at no, the speeds that they can no, do in France. because there's a guy who walks in front with a red flag, and mm. you can't go Is that Mick Lynch? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's that guy you introduced me to earlier. Anyway, listen, we've got a really great clip here and we should be dug out from the vaults. This is Elon Musk laughing at the whole idea of HS2. Have a look. Should we think bigger than HS2 and think about something like this? They did better things in Japan 30 years ago. Um, they got something way better in China. Why are we doing this and, and spending so much money on it? And it's going to take 20 years and by that time we'll be 50 years behind what they've got in Japan. I mean, this just doesn't make sense. And we're that, that was my reaction. That was your re reaction to what's happening in California. Yeah. We are behind California. Oh, my God, sense. really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? I mean, Painfully yeah, Because he was going to build some kind of hyperlink, wasn't he, Elon mm. Musk, which was going to mm. transport people you know, magically through Into a tunnel. space, the boring um, company. No, before the SpaceX thing. Um, this well, was ten I just think a man who's going to put tired executives in space shouldn't be telling him else about a waste of money. Well, I think Elon Musk is quite a clever guy when it comes to technology. No, no, uh, no, ten no. years ago, he said that we were out of date. And yeah. so what does that make it now? We yeah. are. It's just, I mean, I don't understand why the politicians took so long to get to this point where Richard Sunak decided. Was the money's been spent. Was, was that interview spent? ten years ago? Yeah. Oh, I thought he was looking quite well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was before he had all the work. Well, the you know. We can't make decisions in this country and stand by it. Look, I was never really fond of HS2 because I thought... We if don't you're need going it. To, if you're going to level up the North, level up the North, not mm. connect it to yeah, the right. South. I, right. I just thought yeah. there was something really cynical about saying the only way that you can have any development in the mm. North is to have connect some vanity project connecting it to London. I thought if you want excellent infrastructure in the North, Build it, yeah, and don't spend a million billions of, of pounds. Or also doing put it. more stuff in the north of England. Exactly. You know, but they've tried doing mm -hmm. all that. I mean, they've got all the tax offices in Edinburgh. They've got a lot of tax offices in Newcastle. They moved the BBC to Manchester. Large parts of it. You know, I mean, they've done quite a lot for the north. I don't understand why Andy Burnham's always whining. You know, he's a miserable guy, isn't he? I mean, he's always <laughs> complaining. Oh, we're all second-class citizens. Well, you are, Andy. <laughs> you know, well, not everybody well, is let's, in let's turn your comment round and make it less anti-north. I'm not anti-North, no, by no, the way. No, I won't say that to the back of You've that, already reported that too many people to the police. <laughs> well, the, the, well, Andy Burnham might have got that impression. Let's put it that way. But, I mean, seriously, if, if you did what you hesitatingly said and did actually move lots more departments yeah. to Manchester, then people wouldn't need to travel to London exactly. quite as much. Exactly. Well, the point about why we don't need HS2 is because half the people who work in these jobs in various parts of the country don't go to work anyway. Mm. They stay at home. They work from home. What do you do a train for? 
Oh, yeah, I mean, so I think the argument, the argument was right. more about you know. freight capacity. So HS2 was supposed to increase the freight capacity in it between the south and the north. But if it's going to cost 100 billion, surely there's a cheaper way to do yeah, it. Exactly. exactly right. Exactly. Anyway, we must move on. Amanda, your first nominee for the well, day. It's just Stop Oil. Thank who They make me angry every single day. I know. Uh, especially They've this excelled week. themselves this week. They really they? have <laughs> because um, they interrupted a performance of Les Mis, mm. Les Miserables. Did that make it sound mm. exciting? Very yeah. Well, <laughs> we've got actually more before, before you before you. <laughs> Go and describe it. Let's have a look at it. We've got the clip here. Uh, this is near the end, I think, of the show. Very successful. I mean, they're not exactly endearing themselves <sighs> to the theatre going public. Absolutely not. Everybody's I mean, booing them. People are shouting, you nasty people. Very middle class. It was so uh, middle class. Complaining that, about I mean, the clip goes goes on more and there's you know lots of people saying, how rude. How, how <laughs> yeah. rude. Yeah. rude. <laughs> Terribly rude. <laughs> but, but, I mean, it's un 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 unintentional irony here. I mean, this is Les Miserables. This mm. is Victor Hugo yeah. describing the French Revolution, mm. storming the Bastille. Yeah. Now, you think they might have marched on as if they were storming yeah. the Bastille. <laughs> Actually, storming the Bastille would, the would be a good campaign for uh, Just Stop Oil. We want to storm the, the House of Parliament, leave the theatre go, yeah, goes yeah, alone. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, this sort of message, I mean, this is Victor Hugo's uh, play is about uh, revolution, mm. uh, French and world revolution. So, I mean, you know, maybe maybe that was intentional, or maybe they just, you know, just took, the, took the only theatre they could get maybe in Maybe they fancied place. to look at some of the um, uh, some of the musicals in the West End, so they thought, well, we'll watch the first half and then we'll get up and demonstrate <laughs> everybody. But, I mean, a lot but of people paid a lot there. of money. A lot of money. And they all had to get evacuated well, from Including the, the protesters, presumably. Yeah. Well, yeah, but they've got loads of money, because apart from they anything else, they get Dale tickets. Vince is funded by, by, by Labour donors. Well, Dale Vince is yeah. bankrolling them, because he's admitted that. And various other people give them money. Mm. Old people like members yeah. of Pink yeah. Floyd, that crazy woman in America uh, who's connected yeah. to... Um, the skinny... Um, but you'd think, you'd think they'd do more effective the protests, family. wouldn't you? Because it's just so lame so when they, they, they come on with their, with their little banner, yeah. Just Stop Oil. We've well, heard it before. Well, the is, they seem like they're mentally unwell. Look, if you're, if you're actually on board with the whole kind of green revolution and taking climate change seriously and all of that, you should, be, you should detest people like mm. Just Stop Oil. Yeah, because actually, they turn the public against your message. Uh, every time oh, I that, see that's... anyone in Just Stop Oil, when yeah. whether they're gluing themselves to Dartford Tunnel yeah. or to the M25, I just think you are... Unemployed, first yeah. of all, you are also mentally unwell, and yeah. I cannot take you seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, there was, there was five people who were arrested for this, yeah. and they'd been um, locking themselves on stage with bicycle locks, apparently. And um, when you look at who was actually in it, it was an 18 year old, yeah. the youngest, 19, 22, right. 23, See? oldest was 28. And you think, just go to the pub, yeah. just go to the get pub, yeah, just get be young, yeah. have, right. have fun, but these people and just aren't stop interrupting going to stop others. because they've become so kind of, you know, confused no, and, no, and, I, I, well, I and, and completely. Yeah. Utterly deluded. No, but there was a woman who appeared uh, talking on on their behalf, um, who was almost hysterical mm. with with sort of fear and and grief mm. because she said that you know all the journalists there shouldn't be working as journalists. They should all be out you know demonstrating, saving the planet. And she was like ridiculously emotional about it. Have a look at this. How worse does it have to get? How many kids have to die? How many more young people have to do this stuff? I don't know what else to say, Anna. Now that was an example of how range these people have become. I mean, I feel sorry for her, but yeah. she shouldn't be <laughs> interrupting everybody else's life. She's not going to get a part in Les Mis. No. no she's not, a very, is terrible. not a very good it's actor. Really really Let's come at this from a different <laughs> angle. See, I think the question you should ask just up, well, why are they storming the stage in the West End as opposed to storming the House of Commons or storming the Downing Chinese Street? embassy? Because, <laughs> because they've got down armed down the Chinese embassy. Yeah. I mean, oh, the, the whole yeah. place yeah. Uh, protecting well, those areas. Well, well, and okay. snipers. I mean, well, no doubt. And they want to upset instead. If you're instigating a revolution, you should be prepared for that. That's that's like, you know, the yeah, but it's an 18 year old kid who's but they're not, that's part of the who's game. But I mean, you know, uh, the question that that lady that who was very distressed, you're mm. right. I mean, you know, instead of asking that kind of serious question, uh, you know, it's so will you come back on and we're, we're sorry you're upset, as opposed to saying, 
why aren't you attacking the centres of power right. and right. influence? You know, if you want to, I mean, I, I know that they, they probably do this anyway, but I mean, you, you would target the, the oil companies, their AGMs. I mean, what is Les Miserables? Well, they've done that. What should you do? Right. just stop Well, oil. this is the thing. They've done that already. So they've just kind of run out of ideas. So now they're going, oh, in fact, right, this, this, show, this yeah. show, Mike, is the only thing they haven't stopped. Yeah, yeah. well, I don't let them into these shows <laughs> because, you know, they've, they've been known before to glue themselves to things. Yeah. And I would, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that. You're glued to I mean, that. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but I mean, the other problem is, of course, with all of this, is that um, the only thing they've managed to achieve just off all since their inception uh, is that Rishi Sunak has pushed the net zero target back mm. um, and he's just started to hand out some more licenses for the drilling because, of uh, oil and gas. Because it's repelling people. As right. I said, I'm, I'm on board. You know, I, I believe that we should stop climate change and all the rest of it. But I look at that and I think, mm. I don't want to be associated with those people. No. Like, where, where are the solutions? Where are you saying that here's how we get to yeah. net zero with a, with a scientific evidence base? Rather than just crying about it. They're making, they're making, they're making the rest of us with reservations look very normal. Mm. And it's very easy to get on side, mm. right? Mm. The average working person will be like, actually, this person's not freaking out and they're not gluing themselves to Dr. Tunnel. They probably don't have a few screws. Yeah, yeah. let's, let's go with that. Mm. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, Alex Salmond, who's your first nominee? Well, you just mentioned them. I mean, the, the person who carries all before him surely is Rishi Sunak. Yes. I mean, this is a the prime minister. A, a prime minister. A, about a year to go before there's a, an election. Or the, that would be the longest time scale. And he has a conference in which he allows cancellation of a project to Manchester to dominate a Manchester conference, and then allows, you know, his home secretary, you know, Suella Braverman, or even people not in the party, Nigel Farage, to dominate his own conference. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the argument is he shows strong leadership by deciding not to do things. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there's a body of thought which says that, you know, Rishi Sunak should have done that a long time ago, stop doing things. There is a body of thought. But I don't think you can credibly appeal to a nation, given so far behind he is in the opinion polls, and say, look, I'm the prime minister who doesn't do things right. because I changed my mind. Well, he says he's not about change uh, until he recently said he was about change. Yeah. Um, he doesn't change his mind, but he doesn't want to change who's in charge, even though he wants change. Mm. It's quite a confusing picture. Because normally if you say you want change, it means you want somebody else, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, there's also been the question, I mean, obviously there, there are elements, uh, very, very serious elements for financially on HS2. It's also the human element. I mean, you know the spot, about 500 folk who've had their properties bought, their mm. farms mm -hmm. bought, their mm. life's yeah. destroyed uh, in some cases. But never mind the expenditure of money. <laughs> so looking and saying, well, we've done all that to you, right. but incidentally, we're not going to head with it. Well, what about all the land they bought between Birmingham Absolutely. and Manchester, yeah. between Birmingham and Leeds? There must be loads yeah. of it. What Absolutely. are you going to do with that? But it's taken so long, then things have changed, yeah. and he has to react to that change. I mean, I, I do agree with you on, on, on that side of it. But also then with, with Rishi, I mean, isn't he someone who is quite good at handing over the limelight to someone else rather than well, he your got his wife. Your successor. He got his wife, so, like, well, got his wife Nicola to Sturgeon, introduce him. She was, God, Nicola yeah. Sturgeon was just the main yeah. person. Yeah. I mean, she was, he, she he wanted was, all the attention I and it to be her. He's a he's politician. Who, I mean, I suppose, the I suppose you could say he's the conductor <laughs> of the great orchestra <laughs> of the Conservative Party, yeah. except all his players are rubbish as well. Well, let's see if they're any good at dancing. Have a look at this, because they were having quite a good time up there in Manchester. Only problem is one uh, of the people dancing. Everything, everything we've said about just stop oil, delete it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely normal people. Yeah. Well, the thing is, well, one of the people dancing there, who was a big wow apparently at the Tory party conference, was not actually a Tory, Nigel yeah. Farage, mm -hmm. uh, who was sort of welcomed by everybody with open arms as if mm. he should be the real leader. So it's all uh, getting a bit messy for Rishi Sunak. But what did you make of his wife introducing him? Because, I mean, I've always wondered about, you know, sort of, in, you know, roping in members of your family to tell everybody it's what very, a great guy you American, are. It's American, isn't it? It's kind it's, of it's like, very, well, of course yeah. she's your best friend. Yeah, you know, I thought she's going to say kind of, you're a great guy. I think it was quite <laughs> you know? smart because I think, you know, the big problem with his wife is that we all look at her and think, oh, she's non-dom, she's this billionaire. We didn't know who like she was. Like it's a problem. Yeah. But, no, no, but she introduced no, no. herself and we could hear who she was and we had an idea of what she's all about. I think she spoke very well. I thought she was good. Listen, listen. Give her her own show then. I mean, having a introduce them, it looks weak. You know, it says, you know, 
what's the one thing I can do that I won't get protested about mm. or booed at the right. start of a speech? Mm. Or, or, you know, My hot rich wife. Also, yeah, yes. also, who can I get to, to <laughs> big me up? And if it's your own wife, yeah. it's a oh, bit yeah. like, you know, it's you kind of go, is that the best you could do? You couldn't find some colleague that could tell you how great you were. Yeah, but he's their boss, like so... That. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But anyway, listen, um, Alex has reported to the police anyway, so he may not be Prime <laughs> Minister time. for much longer. He'll be taken away <laughs> and clapped in irons by the Scottish uh, HM plod. Uh, whoever they are. Anyway, listen, coming up, uh, we've got loads more. We've got the two mix, uh, who I'm going to be nominating, uh, and we've got something from the United States of America as well. This is Bank of the Week. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We're well underway. We've already got some pretty good nominations, but there's loads more to come. Uh, and it's my turn to do what I would like to call the two mix. Um, I don't know why they're both called Mick. They're both union barons. Uh, they're both troublesome, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And they're both cut from a certain similar cloth. And I'm talking, of course, about Mick Lynch and Mick Whelan. Mm -hmm. um, Alex Salmon very kindly uh, gave me the opportunity to debate with Mick Lynch up at the Edinburgh Festival, um, which was quite good fun. And it's just not a bit offside. You're just taking out your revenge on Mick just because he and his henchmen <laughs> gave you a hard time. I mean, he brought friend. two... He did. He, do, he, did, he brought two flying pickets three. to sit. <laughs> was there three of them? Well, there's only two of them making any noise to sit in the front row and just shout Tory scum at me while I was... <laughs> <laughs> make, a, make a debate about yes. whether public sector workers should be allowed to go on strike. That was great. But in amongst all of the conversations we've been having about HS2, the other thing that people have forgotten is that not only uh, do the trains not work very often in this country, partly yeah. because of the strikes, partly because of the uselessness of the railway um, um, companies that run them as well, uh, but people don't travel by train as much as they used to because you can't ever... Um, guarantee that the train is going to leave on time. It's very expensive. You don't know if you're going to be able to get one back. They keep calling these wildcat strikes. I mean, Mick Lynch and Mick Whelan called strikes all around the Tory party conference, yeah. um, starting from sort of the weekend all the way through to um, the middle of the week. People, there were two tube strikes that were already planned for London. They got Those, those got called off. But, you know, both Mick Whelan and, and Mick Lynch have basically said publicly, we're never going to stop striking mm. until this government basically falls. Oh and God. so it's not about whether they're protecting their workers or protecting their rights. Yeah. It's a political movement. Mick Lynch, um, although he would deny it, is basically a communist. Um, and Mick Whelan is just a troublemaker. He's as left. You know, the other guys are empty. He's a pretty nice salary for a communist. Is that... Is that, is that... <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a nice salary if you're a communist, but what I object to is that, that he's made people's lives miserable. I mean, I've got a son now who's at Manchester University. You know, you never know from one day to the next where you can get a train mm. to go anywhere. I, I know they say that they speak for their union members, but really, you have to think about it critically because I don't think if I was a union boss, I would actually be, be actively working to turn the public against right. Look at what is ha how much money the hospitality industry has lost. Yeah. And oh. that's even the, the biggest battering, considering what they've been through during COVID. Yeah. It's like just a well, it's hurting the ordinary yeah. person. Exactly. The also, all of, the all of their predecessors, you know, the Arthur Scargills of this world, um, uh, the Red Robbo and all the people that, Alex, you'll remember from, you know, the 70s and the mm -hmm. public sector strikes then and the coal mines and the steelworks, everything got shut down. Yeah. You know, there are no more coal mines, there's no more steel, there's no more shipbuilding, there's no more of these businesses and these guys will shut down the railways. Yeah, but yeah. I don't think Red Robbo managed that himself. I mean, look, I, what's interesting about the railway strikes is despite the inconvenience of the public, most indications are that a substantial proportion of the public are on the side of the, of the, of the strikers or at least understand. I don't believe any of this political stuff stuff in terms of their motivation. I think the motivation for uh, strikes on uh, railways and elsewhere is double-digit inflation. I think thing, it's as simple as that. Last, I mean, for example, why would Mick Lynch... public support at around 30%. Yeah, yeah, but still a very substantial that's body substantial, of public that's support. Of well, public. well, yeah, I, yeah. Mean, I, I think there's a substantial it's body of public support. It's almost double for the nurse support. strikes. But what, what I'd say is, look, I don't think there's a political motivation because I can't see the logic in saying, let's strike to bring down this right-wing government and replace it with a right-wing government. Before. Alex, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're not striking hey, next week say, for Labour Alex, conference. No, but yeah. you say well, that as if it's never happened before. But it has happened before because trade unions might well, like well, to bring think, down you governments. You think Mick Lynch has gone to the barricades to bring in Keir Starmer? Do you yeah, really yeah, think yeah, that? Yeah, I think he'd rather I Keir Starmer than... Because he thinks, funding, he thinks think that he could get more out of Keir Starmer than he can out of the Tory party because they'll have to give him some concessions. Yeah. But, you know, and it was embarrassing for the Prime Minister to be doing that speech in Manchester 
Manchester with no trains running, yeah. for minibuses full of mm, conservatives yeah. to be but this, driving this down. Is, I don't understand yeah. minibuses. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's great, you know, when you aren't landing. I love how you're enjoying yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> he, say, he says it's not political. They strike during Tory party conference. It's Labour conference next week. But Guess what? Yeah. They're not striking. Yeah. So well, I don't well. I don't think that's right, Alex. But what I do think is that... Mean, that's, that's your evidence for believing that well, I, look, I, Mick Lynch is arm in arm with Sir Keir Starmer. I don't think... I do. Something yeah. about him wanting to... That's why he wants to take down the government is also a pretty good indication. Yeah. But, you know, that's... Uh, and, believe, and believe me, incidentally, if Sir Keir Starmer becomes Prime Minister and if he has double-digit inflation and if the railway workers are, are losing money and losing jobs, there'll be strikes. They will be strikes. Mm -hmm. They always strike when there's a Labour government because the Labour government always gives in to their demands and that's why they yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. But that's why they don't like the Tory government because the Tory government won't speak to them. Listen, I'm not saying the Tory government have handled it particularly well, but I just think these people need to stop making people's lives a misery. Um, but we've got a clip of Mick Lynch talking to Chris Philp, my favourite minister. Um, have a look at this. That's the unions lie. came out That's onto the lie. street and gave an that impromptu press lie. conference, I mean, it's a TV a footage, lie. saying that the strike was right. going to continue. Okay, let's just pause. Lie. Hang on. I mean, it's on video. Mick Lynch, excuse me. Mick Lynch, I want to ask it's you a lying. question. <laughs> He's very good. I do, like, I do like the cut of his gym. He's like a pantomime trade union baron villain, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he just he sounds like it. He sounds exactly like Bob Crow. All right, my brothers, all out. All right, all down the old uh, whites. What was it? What was the restaurant they used to go to? Uh, well, in the middle you of, uh, saying I was there? No. I mean, <laughs> they used to have, Bob, Bob Crow used to have sort of a Friday lunch session. Uh, in I think it was whites, you know, the, the oyster bar, and they drink oyster champagne bar. and they uh, eat oysters, I wish I was, and yeah. they would sort of stick two fingers up to the establishment and go, "Yeah, we're we're all brothers in arms." Look, and, I, and I actually think Mick Lynch is a very skilled debater. As, I think he is, uh, 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 as you found out. I think he puts his points across uh, extremely well. And I was quite interested that Kirsty Watt was calling him Mick there before she decided to call him Mick Lynch. Yes, and he obviously has an empathy with Newsnight. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, a lot of people on the left have an empathy with news, like, including everybody that works on it, but there we are. Um, let's go to Esther for your yes. second one. So I've gone across the pond to nominate the Republicans. Yes, in there's the a US. lot of weird stuff going on. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, <laughs> you can trust the Republicans to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. It yes. is incredible. So this week they removed their speaker because he had the audacity to come up with a deal with mm. the Democrats, which would basically this extend. This is Kevin McCarthy, right? Kevin McCarthy, which would basically extend the amount of time they could have to debate a proper bill to mm. pass through because mm. they're still kind of haranguing each other over funding for Ukraine mainly and funding for the military sp government spending, which is probably their biggest gripe mm. because that makes up the vast majority. Well entitlement payments make up the vast majority of the government's debt. But now they have ousted their, their speaker. They have no one else to line up, line up for the job, mainly because no one wants that awful job. The Republicans basically, if you get six, if you peel off six Republicans, you've basically lost any sort Donald of Donald Trump said he might do it. And all this comes down to Donald Trump. I yeah. must say this. And the reason why <laughs> is because ever since he won in 2016, he has just lost and lost and lost. He lost them, Georgia. Very easy seat that uh, seat should have won across the country. Well, he, he said he didn't lose it, of course. Well, I mean, of course he would say that. He yeah. nominated terrible candidates. That's another, that's another I mean, uh, in, in a Biden presidency, to have a corpse as your president, yeah. really, they should be having a majority of about 30 or 40. Yeah, they have yeah. a majority of six. Yeah. Well, look, I've never met Kevin McCarthy, but the guy's a bozo. Yeah. Look, <laughs> well, 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 he, Tell us what you really think, well, Alex. Well, no, he does a deal with the Democrats <laughs> to, to save the country, to stop it shutting down. And he doesn't have the wit in doing that deal to say to them, incidentally, will you save me from my nutcases when they try to bring me down? Yeah. Well, he, he, he did, he asked, yeah, right. and they said no. Well, OK, then he shouldn't have done the deal and they would have said yes. But you know why the they did the deal? The guy should be sacked for being you know why they did the deal? Politician. Because the deal he had before, a Republican-only deal, the Republicans rejected. No, 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 but that's not the point. The point is, when he did the deal, he should have said to the Democrats, he should have well, a session, yeah. and you saving my backside yeah, yeah. next week well, he when the loonies come The thing yeah. is, he didn't and believe also, he, would, he would face a challenge. And this when, is asked, the thing. when asked what he felt about it, he started to tell this story about his mum going to Walmart, uh. filling up with gas. Right. Yeah. He was only in the job for it. Well, he was, he's basically the Liz Truss of, yeah. of American <laughs> well, speakers, isn't he? he <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like Alex, I don't know much about this guy, but everything I've seen him say, he doesn't look too clever. He looks as if he's probably better not doing that job, so they'll see if we can find somebody else. Um, Leon, back to you. Yeah, so my uh, second plank is Penny Morden. Yes. Mm. And I feel a bit bad, because I actually yeah. quite like Penny Morden. <laughs> yeah. I think she's really good. But her speech at Tory party There's conference... There's always a but with Penny Morden. <laughs> ...was yeah. incredible. I, mean, I don't know if we heard it. She was basically telling us to stand up and fight. And when we stand up and fight, others will stand up and fight. And it went on like that for about, I don't know, 
15 minutes. It seems to be a long time. And it just, I just thought... I, I thought, thought it was a spoof. I, 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 honestly, I feel, I feel did like not she took lessons her. from Kamala Harris. I think She's talking a lot, but there's nothing there. She probably did it in a hotel room and she thought, God, I sound like Barack <laughs> Obama or even Alex Salmon <laughs> delivering a yeah. soaring piece of rhetoric. <laughs> and then she gets out there and it was just <laughs> awful. She's modelling yeah. herself with me. She led her own applause. That was a bit I like. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Stay the crowd, really? though. Yeah. Can we have a look at it? Because I think it has to be seen this to be <laughs> believed. This is no. Penny Mordant's idea of a rabble-rousing speech. And when our party stands up and fights, the nation stands up and fights. And when our nation stands up and fights, other nations stand up and fight. And they stand up and fight for the things upon which the entire progress of humanity depends. Stand up and fight. Stand up and fight. Thank you, conference. <laughs> I mean, it's like a mic drop. She's still yeah. going. Yeah. She's still there. She's yeah. still there you telling us. You get a fight, and then you get <laughs> a favorite, fight. You get a yeah, fight. My favourite bit is that she pauses for the applause, and then there isn't any. Yeah. So you're oh. kind of going, there's nobody clapping. I mean, I'm wondering it's if she's hearing it. And the voice is in her head telling her, this is great. Did she, yeah. Yeah. Did she plan that speech, or is that off the cuff? Because I think she, she planned it, it because she I did think it without the notes. way that she... It was one, like one of those... Alex, you'll know more about this than anyone. It's like one of those structured speeches where you say one line and then you wait. And then you say the next line and you get to there and like then you Obama. get to there. But except she's just kind of going like that. <laughs> and it wasn't going in the right direction at all. But she certainly put the dance and cadence. So, you know, when you're making a speech, you're meant to do with cadence. That's what tells people when to clap. Yes. She, she, she put the dance in. <laughs> yes. But they didn't clap. So. Yeah, she has to no, clap for well, that's because she doesn't know how to do it. I mean, she, <laughs> she, she forgot the, few, the, you know, the key she words. She should have just waved you know, the sword let's, around. Let's been stop better, the migrants. If she'd said, let's fight to stop yeah. the migrants, then she would have had a huge... And when we stop the migrants, the migrants will stop. And then, yeah. she gone, <laughs> then she could have gone... And then she could have gone, we could fight them on the beaches. <laughs> you know, and then, that, that, would that would have, have done really, well. That would have, really no, that would have done well. Yeah. Seriously, would have. But who, who are we Fighting. Who is she yeah. asking Everyone us to fight? Yeah. It's just yeah. every Everyone. single person. You know what I think it is? I think that that carrying the sword, the, sword. the coronation, it's just gone to her yeah. head. Totally, and she's yeah. like, right, she I am a big her. deal here. Yeah. Yeah. Let me do a little performance. And it's, she's just got carried away. She's Like you said, probably looking in the mirror. You can really imagine it. And she's just kept she's going, kept going. Great. Yeah, she's great. And then like when she's paused, because we think, oh, every single time I watch a Tory... Tory speech, they just clap after every sentence. So the fact they didn't clap, mm. that, that should be really I think they were all doing what Esther was doing, which was just going, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I couldn't believe my eyes. Michael, you you probably remember uh, Peter Lilly a long time yes. ago. Remember he had a list yes. of all the Tory hate figures, mm. you know? Now, if she'd said, let's fight Mick Lynch. Yeah. Let's fight the migrants. Yes. You know, yeah, let's, that would have let's fight Here's the Social Starmer. Security the, the strangers. Yeah. You know, then she would have let's fight the Labour Party. Mm. She would have had wonderful applause. Are you going to be a script writer? Yeah, I mean, well, but it was my There's no thing in the Tory party. He knows a bit about this, you know. I mean, he's done it for a long time. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, it's just kind of embarrassing, though, isn't it? That mm. this is the person who everybody. And you did it as well. You fell into the trap. You went, I really like Penny Morden, but. Yeah. There's all the yeah. buts. No, but I, I, think, I think she looked great with the sword. I think she said some great things in Parliament but that just put me off her a little bit. It was just hilarious thought... how we all got obsessed with her and how she looked at the coronation, and that's what made Optics us think... Optics matters. Yeah, she's going to be the PM because she looked amazing. Well, I think she's the only attractive suit. person in the party. That's, yeah. that's what they're all a bunch of mingers, aren't they? Oh. Well, I go with uh, Ali Ross, the TV critic who described her as looking like a stewardess on the Hindenburg. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bad stuff, that. Anyway, coming up, uh, we're going to be looking at Cinderella uh, because it's not everything that it would seem. Uh, and Suella as well, Cruella. Uh, this is Talk TV. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. It is Friday night and we are well underway. We're more than halfway through uh, and I'm not sure who the winner's going to be. There's so many of them. Um, fascinating stuff. But coming up, uh, we're going to have uh, Alex Salmon's second nominee. But first, um, Amanda, who's your number two nomination? So I'm nominating uh, the, S the Scottish Ballet. Yes. And it's because they've got their ballet panto coming up oh, for yeah. Christmas. Ballet the panto? Yeah, Is that and, they they're, do? and they're and they're promoting it, and it's in Glasgow. Mm. So you could go to the theatre one night; it'll be played by a woman, as you'd expect with right. Cinderella. You could go the next night, and it'll be a guy. That's what I find really frustrating about it: is the fact that they're changing a story rather than just making up a new story mm. and having the male. Like, I mean, Aladdin. You've got Aladdin that you know he he's the kind of mm. um, the person who's not doing great. He's poor, meets the princess. He then has this amazing life. 
why can't we have, you know, you know come up with another story like that? Like that. Well, you, you, must, must, yeah, you must start but, rubbing the lamp, which yeah. is yeah. Rubbing the lamp. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, let me, obviously it's Scottish, so I'm going to defend yeah. it regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to defend Scottish ballot. Firstly, I, I don't really see the problem here. If, as long as they choose, uh, you know, is it going to be a man or is it going to be a woman? Present it. I mean, it's a ballet panto, remember? In pantomime. Is Does this ring any bells? Yeah, but hang on. In pantomime, the principal boy is a woman uh, who plays a boy in pantomime. So what are we getting worked up about? The thing, the thing is, because Cinderella's not a bloke. Because that, yeah. Cinderella's not a bloke. No, no. no Sorry. It's a, it's a Cinderella <laughs> I mean, that's pantomime. It, it? But get with the times. Like, just, <laughs> Hold on. I, artistic I'm... expression. If Scottish ballet want to present a ballet pantomime, with Cinderella as yeah. a man, let them do uh, okay, it. Why, okay, here's, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, but why? But why? Why not? Why, why? why Alex, not? Because I'm, it's I'm, BS, that's why well, not. Well, yes, no, no, because... Just, they're, they're just they're, having they're, to ruin they're... other traditional stories that are around, that it was There's lovely... There's a much bigger, for... I'm, I'm, a I'm much a bigger huge, question. How I'm a can huge you... ballet fan. I watch ballets um, virtually, like, almost every few months. Um, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, that's, that's all my salary. Oh, sorry, oh, that's, 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 that's all my salary will allow me. Look, Matthew Bourne did a, a, a version of Swan Lake where the swans, which are typically women in tutus, were men. Mm. And I hated it because I thought it was just strange because I don't think the male physique can be as graceful and swan-like as a woman's physique. I think oh. in, in Cinderella, and I'm all for artistic expression because, of course, you have to allow that in the arts. Cinderella's not a man. Like, I'm sorry, the whole premise is the fact that the, the, the yeah, prince I mean, comes to save she her doesn't have, because I mean, she's got a screw stop for the ball. I mean, do you have... But you, also, you have to ask... There's, there are practical questions. But, Will the Cinderella man wear point shoes? The, Only women, female the, ballerinas My, wear my big problem with it... There's a much bigger question than this. The Ugly Sisters. How can a ballerina represent the Ugly Sisters? Ballerina, the ballerinas, <laughs> ballerinas are the size of nothing, right? The Ugly Sisters, in the story, are quite substantial. That's your opinion. <laughs> No, it's not no, my because opinion. They, they, they're ugly, the point but they can is be they can't thin. get the slippers on I mean, because they're they can large. Be the world has gone feet. mad. You know, Alex Salmon's gone woke, right? That's yeah. all I know. <laughs> no, yeah, they, 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 they won't be the ugly I sisters. I really didn't think I'd be here, here sat with Alex Salmon and him on. defending yeah, this. I can't believe it. This cannot get worked up when when the Prime Minister is wasting £100 billion in a railways no building. Right. I can't well, don't worry, he's on the show as well. About Scottish Valley having a man as Well, hang on. Let me ask you a question. How, how have the ugly sisters become the ugly brothers? Yes, have that's they? a possibility. I mean, then it's no, not Cinderella no, it's anymore. Just, just yeah, exactly. Is, it, also, is it, it robbing a role of a, of a talented woman who, you know, wants to be Cinderella? It's also opening she... the doors because then it could change into, like, you know, why isn't it Cinderella, who's a man, who's then meeting a prince? But it's dead. It's Cinderella as a man meeting a, a princess. So, if it was the... I think it's the opposite. No, that's what I mean. It's not. should be able to represent other characters. I don't think you have to be an Italian to play an Italian. I don't think you have to be a Scot to play a Scot. Woman to play Cinderella. I, I think you know, Sean, Connery, Sean, I mean, you know. Sean Connery, the late Sean Connery, Sean Connery, played every nationality as a Scot and he did it wonderfully. You, that, that yeah, but he never played Cinderella. Only, only exactly. a certain so people can play a certain Sean, he oh, Wait, hang on, hang on. He couldn't have played Cinderella. No, with, 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 with ballet, it's with ballet, 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 ballet artistic <laughs> expression, there are limits to ballet. There, there, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I know. it's because there's ballet technique. Men don't wear point shoes. Well, men, Male like, ballerinas don't wear point shoes. If it was the English ballet, Alex would be against it. It's just because it's the Scottish ballet. I actually like the Scottish ballet. But you're almost like outnumbering people. See, I come on to this show defending the Scottish ballet. I get outnumbered for you. never comfortable unless you're at least 41. I mean, I would like to have seen... You make it too easy. I mean, you talk about Sean Connery. I would like to have seen him playing Cinderella. Anyway, it's now time for your own spot, which you've taken time up on because you've been talking so much. I never thought that Cinderella (laughs) was going to be... I didn't think Cinderella was going to be the one that everybody argued about. Because he's trying to get free tickets. Is that what it's about? This has been the big blow since I've not been First Minister. I no longer get the free tickets to Scottish people. He's using your show, Right, so, on to Cinderella. Well, it's... This is the thing. Suella de Braverman has taken the Tory conference by storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, by unlike uh, Penny Mordaunt, she can actually make a speech. <laughs> she knows the key phrases to excite the Tory faithful. Being nasty to migrants, the unemployed, all these poor folk and so forth, it excites. She took the conference by storm. But what they're suppressing is the real information. When she plunked her heels on the tail of a guide dog. <laughs> yes. Now, I'll I've tell you this. this. Picture. I think we might have it. There it is well, there. Well, let's have a look at it. <laughs> You're going to give us a bit of a close-up on it as well. Oh, no. Oh. There it is. Oh. And I, like you, I'm a dog lover. Right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, as indeed are the people of England. 
Uh, and, you know, guide dogs are trained not to bark when they're in pain. This is absolutely true. Uh, and they only bark when, they're, when their partner is in real distress and they're trained to accommodate pain. And she made the apology. She said she was apologising to all dogs, you know, making light of the to issue. To all dogs? She said she issued a statement saying, ho, 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 I'm apologising to... It's not a ho, ho, ho. She... Look at that. I mean, look, she used to be called... Yeah, but she's probably so, doing it by accident. Though, no, right? no, I don't believe that. At least she's not here. Suella, <laughs> <laughs> used to call her the call, used to call her. Then this is important. Suella de V, yeah. uh, after Cruella de V. What did Deville. Cruella de V do? Deville. She was going to strip the flesh from Dalmatian puppies. See, that's that's so, good <clears throat> so I'm telling you, there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. And the conservative <laughs> spin doctors have been working overtime all week to keep that picture, which only talk TV has the courage to show, <laughs> yes. out of the public consciousness. But that, believe me, will sink Suella Braverman's possibilities. Very on brand, brand, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, I think Cyril Braverman knows that people like to pretend that she ha is actually Cruella de Vil, and I think she plays up to it. Yeah, she uh, loves it. Because in a way, that gives her licence to do anything that she wants. You I mean, can't she be can... cruel to animals. You can't Maybe. be cruel to animals, but nobody really believes that that's cruel to animals. <laughs> nobody really looks at that and goes, look, she's deliberately stepping on the dog. If that was Mick Lynch, you'd have no doubt whatsoever. <laughs> no, because actually I'm a very fair man and I, I would not spin anything into something that it is not. That's not what I do. I oh, so that, know that. that. Well, I'm merely saying that picture was suppressed. Th by this the, is the Tory spindle. This is the problem with conference. Is normally, you know, I've been there with, when you're advising a minister and you see every single picture. You look over what's in the background, what they're doing there. <laughs> At Tory conference. Anyone can take a picture. Mm. So that's yeah. why there's all these fires being, you know, ignited everywhere at a conference right. and these things come out. I right. think we can assume that was not an official concern. I think, I, I think so. so. And, you know, not every Tory party member was keen on Suella Braverman's speech. Uh, let's have a look at Andrew Boff. He was removed uh, from the auditorium. There's no such thing as gender ideology. All ideology. institutions the car catches. No. And no, of course, this is as always happens when the left gets the upper hand, those who fail to perform are perfect. Chased out of their jobs for saying that a man can't be a woman. Scolded for rejecting that they're beneficiaries of institutions. I mean, and all the people who were there, and you'll know this because you've been to many of these things, um, Leon, uh, people were saying he was sort of mumbling under yeah. his breath. He wasn't speaking. He wasn't heckling, really. He wasn't actually really? shouting out. It didn't disrupt but her. He was... He didn't He'll disrupt her. He'll never get a spot uh, and just stop oil. Yeah. <laughs> no, she, yeah. Well, she actually said they should bring him back in. She didn't ask yeah, for Yeah, that was good. I thought, I thought it was good she said But, that. I mean, it reminded me of that guy at Labour... Remember the old guy at the Labour Party yeah. conference that they kicked out, um, who had been a Labour Party member for, you know, mm. decades and decades and decades, but he didn't like the way they were moving. Oh, you know, the right war. Um, and this guy... But I listened to this guy, Andrew Boff, after, uh, afterwards, being interviewed. And I'm going, I'm sure you're a Tory, mate. He was banging on about how the migrants are terribly unlucky people and we should all feel sorry for them and we should welcome them into our country and that she's a homophobe and she's anti-trans and all of this. And I'm going, sorry, I don't think you sound like a Tory. Are you really a Labour Tory? Labour conference is next week. Yeah, I mean, I should go up to Liverpool. <laughs> Down and, there. And get stuck into it was, it was a bit heavy-handed, though. I mean, he was literally just muttering under his voice pretty yeah. much. And, and the actual police, you know, genuine police, not security, mm. were, were taking him out. And I just yeah. felt that was very heavy-handed. point there. You say I'm wasting people's time by the oh, the Prime Minister. Time. What about the waste of police time and escorting that poor man out of the Conservative yeah. conference? Well, they're there anyway, though, to be fair. Oh, I see. see now you... something to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, keep exactly. them busy. Uh, yeah, because they've got to keep the peace. Idea, you never know, do you? Uh, Alex Sam's troublesome today. I don't know what he's got <laughs> <laughs> really worked up. He's put something in his iron brew. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> anyway, listen, uh, coming up, we're going to go to the royal family, the last bastion uh, of the scoundrel. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are entering the final furlong. We've had all sorts of nominations. We've had nine altogether, and we're going to make the tenth one now because uh, it's my turn. And I'm going to go back to Esther, one of your favourites. Uh, it's Harry and Meghan. Um, because, you know, um, we've already heard from Spotify uh, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, that uh, the guy who was in charge of some of the podcasting departments there uh, referred to these uh, two 
ridiculous people as the effing grifters mm -hmm. and said that they basically hadn't worked yeah. out for Spotify. Well, we've now got the Spotify CEO, the chief executive officer this week, basically saying that the 18 million pounds that they gave or 18 million dollars that they gave to Harry and Meghan to make these podcasts was not worth the money, effectively. <laughs> He's a guy called Daniel no. Eck, right? <laughs> he said the company had been trying to position themselves as a global leader in podcasts and Harry and Meghan were used to deliver that mission. Uh, and he says, unfortunately, it didn't actually work. Let's have a look at what the podcast was about. People should expect the real me in this and probably the me that they've never gotten to know, certainly not in the past few years, um, where everything is through the lens of the media as opposed to, hey, it's me. I'm just excited to be myself and talk and be unfiltered and, yeah, it's fun. Harry, it's just me. It's just me. It's just me. And you Look, want to know. Just little old me. Uncensored. Just little <laughs> old me. Oh my God. Well, listen, little old me didn't produce much. 12 podcasts in two and a half years. I mean, I do one a week. Actually, I do one a day yeah. um, because they make a podcast out of my show. Um, so this idea that, you know, this was going to be the answer for Spotify, I don't know what they thought 18, they were going to get. 18 million quid. That gets you about five centimetres of HS2. I, I mean, mean you know. it's really incredible, isn't it? <laughs> can I, can I? And they basically said uh, they're learning now at Spotify and moving on because they also made a mistake by hiring um, Michelle Obama huh. to do another series of podcasts that nobody was interested in either. You know, you can see a pattern emerging here. Mm -hmm. You go woke, you go broke, mm -hmm. don't you? I mean, they had all this Mr. pandemic Eck. money that they wasted. Mr. The Egg, who's in charge of Spotify. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm sometimes called Big Egg. Yes. Uh, you know, and I, I just like <laughs> to say... It's a Scottish say, thing, that, isn't it? Uh, to Mr. Egg, as one egg to another. Uh, that, that I, I've got a, a show, Scotland Speaks, every Thursday, 9 o'clock. It's on Spotify. It has plenty of content. I, I can put more on if he wants. And if Egg would like to sign me for a... Million pound yes. deal. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do Only it. A million. You're, you're too generous. Million per episode. Yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I'm, I'm available. Right. I'm just available. I've got I'm, a feeling. You know, we can talk about this. I've, we? I've got a feeling that they mutually ended this arrangement. So maybe they didn't actually get the full 18 million. Maybe they only got. Oh, half that's the only way they. are supposed did. to pay for the security for the Well, year. I mean, you might well ask. Maybe he'll have to write. She's supposed to be writing another book. She's got another book deal she, coming she, up. She can write. But I think the problem is, is that <laughs> we saw the real me. It's just me, and people didn't really oh, like wait. the real me. I mean, Mike, the, 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 his complaint me. was they didn't do it, as I understood. X complaint yes. uh, about the royal couple, the mm. non-royal couple, or whatever they are. They, they, the complaint was they hadn't done enough content. Now, right. I don't understand. I mean, why couldn't she witter on like that every day? I yeah. mean, why? Because she's too busy. Oh, $18 million. She's too busy complaining. And I know. I thought she right, every now, other. The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, to choose yeah. who the winner will be. Now, last week, it was very exciting because we had an actual vote last week. And it wasn't you. No, we're not going to have it this week. I can tell you that. <laughs> um, but the vote was between my two nominees. Right. So, no, <laughs> Uh, so it was a very democratic situation, but it was between the rejoiner march, which was in London, and HS2. And HS2 lost, right? So HS2 didn't win it last week. But I think this week, we've got to give it to HS2 because HS2 no. is the dominating story. Look at them all so disappointed. Yeah, you know, Plank of the Week. I mean, billion. for heaven's oh, sake, yeah. nearly 200 billion. I mean, you could have built the entire NHS budget out of that. <laughs> um, there we are, Plank of the Week. It's HS2. You can rope in Rishi Sunak, you can rope in everybody else, Penny Morden, a whole lot of them. But it's HS2 that wins. Thank you very much indeed to Esther, uh, to Leon, to Amanda, to Alex Salmon. Brilliant, fantastic. Uh, coming up next, uh, we're going to have all sorts of good things for you, including the Dean Dorries. This is Talk TV.